Yesterday, Team Liquid won against CLG in a 3 0 sweep of their best of five series. I'm joined now by Mark Marks Zimmerman. Did you think about that one whenever you came up with the name that it would just be kind of redundant? No. I didn't really think about anything when I came up with it. I was like, well, my name's Mark. My last name's Zimmerman, so Mark Z. That's it. Well, now you have to live with the repercussions, which is that I'm going to call you Mark Marks Zimmerman. Just to live for it. It's just brutal. Yeah. Just quit. Yeah. Anyway, so for those that don't know, uh, Mark here is the analyst for Team Liquid, and he's been with the team for how long now? Uh, since before season four, like right when Curse uh, was like they were relegated, they had to requalify. I started last like October, so like a year and a half ago. So like October 2013. Yeah, yeah. So you've seen a lot of the stuff that's going on, maybe even longer than, like I, I know a lot of people know Joe Steve or whatever, but I feel yeah. like you've been there longer. You've yeah, maybe one of the longest now. Uh, and so it's always interesting to get kind of your context and perspective on this kind of thing. Uh, so let's sort of talk a little bit about Team Liquid's uh, season and split so far. Uh, you guys started off kind of rough. But there was all this drama. I think a lot of people predicted you guys to be one of the top teams. Uh, but now you guys have made it at least into fourth place, and and we'll sort of see how. Yeah, I know, right? But we'll see how that goes. Uh, do you feel like most of the issues with the team have now been resolved? I'd say most of them have. Yeah, there's still some, um, but uh, like a lot of the the interpersonal issues have mostly been solved. Uh, there's still some like team play issues, and we're working on fixing them. It's always like two steps forward, one step back. You'll fix one thing, mess something else up, whatever it is. A lot of people consider TSM to be hands down the best team in North America. I mean, we'll see how that, that plays out over the course of the playoffs. But what what do you think separates a team like Team Liquid right now from a team like TSM? Um, I think TSM is a little bit more, I, w I don't want to say like predictable, but they have like a, a more defined style. And it's kind of like, you know, Bjergsen centric. And I know that they've said that they've been trying to experiment with other comps and stuff like that, but I still think that they're at their strongest when Bjergsen's carrying. And so with us, you know, traditionally it's like a quas carry, but I think we've done a lot recently to move away from that, especially with like Piglet really starting to play well. And so hopefully I'd say we have like a little bit more dynamic of a team. If like we might have more flaws, but we also have a couple more strengths in that sense. I mean, what are the, the flaws? Like what, I guess maybe the question could be, what's holding you back from overtaking TSM or, or equaling them, rivaling them, rivaling them? I can't even, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's the end of the split. I can't even say words anymore. Yeah, um, consistency. I think like skill-wise, you see we have the, the players to compete. Um, and even as far back as spring or summer split last year, it was, a, it was a, a very similar story where like we do really well in scrims, we beat the top teams, but we just lose the bottom teams for whatever reason. And so, you know, this split, it's kind of the same story. We do have the same three core players in Quas, Special, and Dom. And so I think you can kind of see the similarities there where, like, sometimes our team play is lacking. Sometimes our early game doesn't go great. And then, like, we kind of – our mid game has never been, like, super, super strong. And so I think that's one of the, the areas that is a weakness for us and keeps us from being a top, top team where like it's just consistency like we can take games off anybody but we also drop games against anybody yeah. uh, do you think that all the piglet stuff has been kind of resolved that he like if there was some issues integrating him into the team before that that kind of stuff is pretty much gone and you mentioned the interpersonal issues being resolved yeah so it's not like you know he dislikes us or we dislike him or like whatever tensions there might have been before or anything like that i'd say like there's still like some issues where like how we want to play the game out, how we seek picks bands sometimes is still a little like not on the same page. Um, and but there's like other team issues too. Like I said, like the consistency, the early game, some or like the mid game, early game, shot calling, stuff like that is still, you know, we're working on it. So it's not just the like piglet. There's like a lot. There's still some issues, even despite how good we look this weekend. Like that's not like, oh, everything's peachy now. Yeah. I mean, kind of speaking of how you guys looked this weekend. Uh, Double lift after that game tweeted something along the lines of, uh, you know, like, oh, it wasn't tilting or whatever. We just got outplayed. Uh, do you think that that's a fair assessment? Do you think that uh, you guys, like, they played to their best and you guys overcame them? Or, I mean, what, what really allowed you guys to do that clean sweep? I actually, this was a kind of interesting thing because we scrimmed tip a lot this week. And as the games are going on now, you see tip and CLG run a lot of similar comps. 
And so we basically scrimmed kind of against CLG this week is how like I view it. it was like we played the comps. We came up with how we wanted to play against their comps. We knew like what win conditions we wanted to go for against their comps. And so I think picks band wise and like prep wise, I felt really, really good as the games played out. I was like, oh, I know this situation already. I hope my players are recognizing that like we've been in this situation twice this week already. So I think that was a, a good example. Well, that was like kind of set us up for success. And I also think CLG didn't really play that well. I think like. Game two, if they hit some Sejuani alts on our carries, they have like the AOE comp to like murder us in the mid game. And you almost saw it in some of the team fights. And then I think the third game, they like, you shouldn't get solo killed in every lane. Like, even if you have bad mashups, that shouldn't be happening. Did you have a chance to talk to your players afterwards? Was it, were they like, oh yeah, we, thank God we scrim tip because that, that made sense? Yeah, well, I was the one to point it out between games. I was like, hey, that's the exact same comp we played against like two or three times this week, you guys. Like, we're prepared for this. So. Uh, yeah, I pointed out. They all are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We like feel really good about it. Was that something that you kind of could have predicted going into this, or was it just sort of like you're like, whoa, look, they're picking the same stuff like that Tip picked while we were in scrims? You can sort of predict it. So obviously, when you look at the playoff bracket, the top teams are going to be scrimming each other. So we ne we didn't get scrims with TSM because obviously they're probably scrimming CLG and C9. So then C9 or CLG is probably scrimming gravity or tip and they're probably going to prefer tip so you can figure that like people are kind of sharing strats and link is kind of like a, a roam focus not like a huge pressure player in mid and Xiaowei is actually the same way he doesn't like you know try and get like a ton of solo kills and stuff like that so you can kind of see some overlap in their champ pools tf is something that we talked about karthus was another thing that's like it could pop up and stuff like that so we were pretty prepared i'd say one of the things, I mean, we're kind of getting into that right now, but one of the things that is so different about this split in the season compared to the past couple is how much uh, across the board, like uh, the community teams, uh, the broadcast, everybody are talking about support staff. And we've seen a lot of people talk about like the TSM support staff, for instance, and and what Loco Doko can do there with his analysts and the whole thing at I Am Katowice where he's like, oh, we spent 12 hours practicing, you're getting ready for this. So uh, we're... It's it's fun for me to talk to like an AD carry or or a support and say like you know like who do you look up to for those roles and and who what what do you think that they have that you you could have or do you think that you're the best something along those lines right uh, now I'd kind of pose the same same question to you like looking at the the support staff on TL do you guys think that you're on par with the top teams do you think that you guys have areas you need to improve. Well, I don't want to like clear up like a little misconception. There's like this idea that we have like this massive support staff or something. I've heard like they've been talking about on the broadcast, and that's not really the case. Like Peter is actually kind of part time because he lives in San Francisco. He's not there all the time for some scrims. I'm like coaching basically. That takes away from my ability to be like the analyst. And then like after scrims, I have to lead discussions. I'm talking to players about that stuff, and that's not really what you would traditionally like call an analyst like responsibility. So we definitely shared a lot more responsibilities than I think like a CLG does where they have Scar and Zix or like, you know, TSM where they have Loco and then they have Parth and um, Dylan or something. So I think we're a little different in that sense. And we might have a couple more people. So we have two guys who's been with me all split. One's called Ia2. He's like a business consultant from Finland and he does like uh, lean is like a principle that businesses use. And we took some of those and then applied them to our team and stuff like that. So he's been helping as a consultant. We have another part-time guy. His name's uh keith snow spots or something i'm terrible at remembering okay. like all their monikers but uh yeah he's been with us all split and then we actually had two other people who s we started the split with but had to like part ways with part way through because they were just like work working out and that's when i post about looking for volunteers because we do a lot of stuff with scrim stats and it take it's like really labor intensive so we were looking for a couple more volunteers so like the idea that we've had like this like really strong like base support staff is a little misleading because peter's in and out i'm picking up responsibilities we're swapping out people who are supposed to be helping me out in the middle of the season so yeah it was a little all over the place yeah. and in terms of like people that i don't really look up to like any of the other organizations is like looking to what see what they're doing i think like i i don't even like talk to any of them actually like in a professional sense like what are you guys doing what do you do for this stuff I just I think I'm I'm like kind of confident in like what we do. And so whenever you and, and Peter are looking at like how you're going to approach the team and, and like I think is there anything that you model it off of? I mean, I know just from my personal dealings with you and anybody that looks at your Twitter that you are somewhat of a traditional sports fan. So yeah. is there an element of that at all that comes into play when you're looking at like how to support uh, a esports team? 
Yeah, so that's that's definitely something that Steve is like a big fan of. He also is like looking at what successful organizations do in other areas. So sports is a good one to look at. And you know, obviously, we talked to a guy who does lean, which is like a more traditional business uh, practice. Then we've applied principles to the actual in-game stuff and like analysis of it. So uh, yeah, we look for inspiration all over the place, and I think like we do a, a decent job at that kind of stuff. If you could expand out, like, and let's say next year you guys are looking in and it's like, hey, you know, like we now even have more resources that we can put into like the support staff or that kind of thing, or or even just across the board with esports team since they're only now starting to really build the infrastructure for like a support side of things. Like, what what would you like to see in the future for um, esports teams or league teams? Well, we started doing the office idea, and I can say personally, because I used to live in the team house last year, and it, like, is overwhelming, like, the amount that, like, it takes at your life. So I was happy to move out, and I think that's, like, a good start for teams outside of, like, support staff. Like, I think gaming houses are good, but if you can su substitute them with offices and kind of keep that level of control over players, which I'm not sure players are, are mature enough yet to handle, like, living on their own, especially a lot of them are young, so... Ideally, you'd move away from that. I'm not sure how possible that is even in like the next year or two because you're the manager needs to live it with them right now because they won't get stuff done otherwise. And the hourly responsibilities are obviously more than like a traditional office eight hour a week or eight hours a day kind of thing. Yeah. So that's not quite there. Uh, in terms of like the support staff, I think like coach, analysts, and then like scout kind of idea, the like coming up with what other teams are doing, focusing more on them, and then like someone helping the analysts. Uh, with some of the stats stuff working with them so I think like something like that is how we kind of have it and I think that's like good I don't obviously I'd like to bring people on like more full-time not have everyone be like volunteers or yeah. something and like but that's a money thing yeah. less well, there's people who are passionate and willing to put the hours in so sir I always offer pro players the opportunity to say anything they want to any of the fans out there I don't know how many uh, Mark Zimmerman fans there are uh, you, yeah. It shouldn't be any. Okay, well, yeah. just in case, terrible. you're terrible. Okay, cool. So this is you saying that Team Liquid support staff is terrible? Absolutely. Yeah. It is a minor miracle we're in the playoffs and uh, that our team didn't explode. Well, thank God for miracles yeah. here, on, here on Easter Sunday. Is there anything you want to say to any of the fans out there? Nope. Uh, just, well, that's <laughs> – yeah. See, no, I mean uh, – yeah, it's, I just like to think that like the fans for like the support. I know I've said before that we had like this is like a weird season, probably like one of the weirdest seasons like any team has had in terms of like roster stuff. Usually they bench one guy and it's like that's it. Now we got this new guy and we're like swapping between people and like all that stuff. And I think we're kind of seeing it come to fruition now and hopefully for the rest of the playoffs. But thanks for sticking with us and all that. Well, thank you so much for the interview. Always interesting to get a look at what goes on behind the players and behind the team and all that kind of thing. So yeah. uh, for everyone else, you can check out the rest of our coverage of all things LCS and more at OnGamers.com.